This week on Frank's World TV, I talked to Mary Jo Foley to find out what 2014 has in store for Microsoft. Hello and welcome back to Frank's World TV. I'm your host, Frank Lavinia. Well, it's a new year and with a new year comes, well, the tendency to do predictions. And then rather than just have me kind of think up things in a vacuum in terms of what I think will happen, I thought I would pick the brain of one of the best experts in terms of reading the tea leaves and figuring out what the technology industry is going to do and more specifically, what Microsoft is going to do. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome Mary Jo Foley to Frank's World TV. So what do you see happening with Microsoft in 2014? Uh, so one, one thing I think we're going to see that's going to affect developers and ultimately customers too in 2014 is this whole idea of the unification of Microsoft's different platforms. And I don't think it's going to completely come together in 2014, but I think 2014 is going to be a good interim step, getting people, uh, both developers and customers, again, closer to the holy grail of one store across the platforms, one set of developer tools, one set of APIs, uh, to, the, to the extent that that's really possible. I, I'm kind of oversimplifying when I say one. So let's make sure these two platforms are, have even more in common. And again, I, I don't want to get people's hopes up that this is when you're going to see one store and one complete set of APIs that are all common. But I think this will be the next step toward that. And I think that's a really big deal. And that's going to be a very defining theme for Microsoft in this year across phone, um, the PC slash device, and even Xbox too. I think we're going to see more updates coming to Xbox One that'll bring that into the picture too. So that by maybe 2015, Microsoft will actually have a very unified platform story if everything goes to plan. So is 2014 going to be a queue up for something even bigger and greater in 2015? I, I, I kind of see it as like a stepping stone year. I feel like 2013 for the platforms was was the introduction of Blue uh, on a bunch of different fronts on Office and on Windows Server and, and Windows Client. And 2014 will kind of be the completion of the Blue wave. So we're starting to see a lot more of a rapid cadence between releases. And is this something we're going to start seeing more of? Is this the new normal? I think so. And, and you know, it's really interesting that Visual Studio has been leading the way. Visual Studio, they were, I think, a total of, depending on how you want to measure it, three or four updates to Visual Studio last year, at, which is pretty amazing because Visual Studio forever had been this product that was on a very similar schedule to Windows. It was kind of every two, two and a half, three years, you'd see a new Visual Studio. And this year, they, they had promised the year before that you were going to see this rapid cadence in Visual Studio and there'd be constant updates with not just fixes, but new features. And they actually pulled it off and they did it. We saw this first with Silverlight. You know, you know the other place they've done it, and this team doesn't get a lot of credit at Microsoft, but they've actually been on a rapid cadence to uh, almost as far back as Silverlight, I think, is the Dynamic CRM team. Yeah. They have been doing pretty consistently... Uh, between two and four updates a year, depending on how you count it. Um, so at, at least two major updates a year to both the CRM on-prem and the CRM in the cloud platform. So that's a pretty big deal too, because that's not, that's not a trivial piece of software to be updating. We developers tend not to think of CRM very much. And you know, it's funny though, it, if you really look at Microsoft CRM um, and its foremost competitor, which I would say is Salesforce, uh, Salesforce really pitches their platform very heavily as a developer platform. And Microsoft hasn't been doing that with Dynamic CRM up to this point. I mean, you can develop add-ins to it and extensions and apps for CRM. And there are, are quite a few of them actually in their app store. But Microsoft's never really made that a centerpiece of their positioning of CRM. And I, I kind of wonder if that's going to change a little bit in the coming year and 
we're going to see more of that positioning uh, dynamic CRM as a platform. And if there's one thing Microsoft does exceedingly well, it's the developer story. It is. Yeah. Part of their big reorg has been this notion of creating one Microsoft. Is this something that we're going to see a more of a consistent theme over the next five, 10 years? And, and I do realize predicting something, how a company is going to do anything, especially in technology, is a very difficult task. Yeah, I, I would think so, for sure. I mean, ever since Microsoft did the reorg uh, this past summer where they did the whole push around one Microsoft, um, I, I, you know, I think a lot of people thought that was just a bunch of words and they didn't really think it had a lot of teeth. But if you look at what's happened since just July of this year, you've seen a lot of progress towards that goal, uh, both public facing things, uh, the way it, it, an example would be the way that Windows Phone and Windows 8.1 are looking more and more alike uh, and working more and more in similar ways. Uh, and also kind of behind the scenes, too, from from people I've talked to, I hear that, that things are very different in terms of how the teams are working together inside Microsoft. And in the past where people might have been operating in their own silos or almost working as adversaries inside the company, that that whole emphasis has really changed. And the idea now is, hey, we're doing something that's going to help SQL Server or we're doing something where we could really team well with Office 365. So why don't we start talking from the very beginning instead of at the end just saying, oh, guys, we just developed this. Here's the code. And I think that's good for customers and I think it's good for the company. I think it's really yeah. good for the customers. And I think the customers don't even fully appreciate yet what that's going to mean to them. But I think this, again, 2014 being this transitional uh, kind of a year for Microsoft, I think they're going to start seeing this more and more and maybe start believing it. I, I, I think uh, another example I'd point to is Bing. You know, so many people uh, uh, who don't watch Microsoft closely think Bing is just a search engine still. And they don't realize a lot of the things that have been happening behind the scenes to make Bing a developer platform. And uh also, the way Microsoft's kind of opening up the Bing APIs internally and externally so that people can use these APIs in, in writing applications for Windows 8 and Windows Phone. I think uh, that message hasn't really kind of percolated outside yet, but I think in 2014, you're going to see a lot more of that. I saw the Bing presentation from last year's Build Conference, and it was stunning. It was amazing. I saw a really interesting presentation this year um, from James Whitaker, who works in this new kind of, um, I, don't, I don't know what, what I would call it, kind of like the super developer team that Microsoft formed with some of their rock star developers. And uh, he's, he was presenting at a tech conference here in New York last fall. His pres he could only have five minutes, I think, to make the presentation, but he showed how Bing how integrating Bing's backend into Office could really change how you work with Office. It was almost like the Bingification of Office and what that would look like if you were a customer. So he, sh he showed an example of, say you're, you get an email from your kid and the kid says, hey dad, can I go to this concert here uh, Saturday? Would you take me? And inside the email are all these hot links to things that have already been searched for you on Bing, like the band, the map, um, restaurants that are nearby, um, a lot of different things that are already done for you so that it's almost like uh, you've got the common uh, events and entities already kind of mapped out for you. And he showed that in five minutes and people in the audience were stunned because they, they were like, wow, does this exist? Like, can, can I do this now? And it's just starting to um, be rolled out as far as I understand. And Microsoft's done some internal work and shown it to a few big customers and said, what do you think? Would you, would you like this if we could do it? And it, I think I can tell you the people in the audience are pretty interested in that. That's very cool. Um, I mean, it makes sense because these search engines, they, they capture a lot of metadata. So they have a lot of intelligence and it makes sense to use them in places where the context almost cries out for it. I do like the term bingification. That's very cool. I, I kind of made that up and uh, Whitaker said to me, hey, I might steal that, can I? Because <laughs> I was trying to explain it in, in something short. You know, I was like, what did they do to Office? They kind of bingified it, right? So in the immortal words of Dr. Dre, 
just chill till the next episode. I'm your host, Frank Lavinia. Now what do I say?